my son turned 12 years old. And I would, shut, I, I would really tremble to think that I would send my son to school, to a boarding school, to pick up skills and to relate with other children, only for him to come back in a body bag. Mr. Speaker, if you read the story of Endarasha, it is a horror story. This is one of those things that if our committees were properly resourced, the first business would have been for the relevant committee, be it education or security, to go to Endarasha, to go there and establish the facts. We cannot trust the government to tell the story. We cannot trust the executive to tell the story. And that is why parliament exists, such that if there is something that has happened in this nation, and Kenyans are very skepti skeptical of the account that the national exec executive provides. Mr. Speaker, I want to encourage the relevant committee. If all of us cannot go to Russia, we must go there. We must establish the facts. We must assure the parents that it is safe to reopen the school. Mr. Speaker, a school where 21 children have been roasted to death, you can imagine the kind of trauma that will visit the other children if they are forced to go back to that school. And why would parents be forced to send their children back to that school? Because they are paid fees for the entire year, and they don't have an option to transfer their children. Mr. Speaker, we need to be empathetic, and Endarasha Hillside Academy summarizes the state of education in this country, that it doesn't matter. Children can die as long as you don't touch the mountain. It doesn't matter. Children can die as long as you don't destabilize the politics. A country that does not put children at the center of its policy and its politics is a country that is dead. Mr. Speaker, this morning, the CS for Labor brought here a redacted summary of Kenyans who have acquired jobs in the recent job-seeking spree that the president has been on. Out of that entire schedule, Mr. Speaker, 60% had secured jobs as housemates. Housemates. We are exporting housemates. We are manufacturing housemates. Mr. Speaker, what kind of education system is that? South Africa, the education system has produced and exported Elon Musk. He's now the richest man in the world. The Indian education system has produced and exported executives of tech companies globally. Kenya has produced and exported housemaids to Saudi Arabia and Qatar. It is a big shame. That is a state of education in this country. Mr. Speaker, I believe that if there is a crisis that we need to deal with today, it is the education crisis that is manifested in strikes at all levels from primary to secondary to universities. A university funding model that does not make sense, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as I conclude on the issue of the state of healthcare as raised by Senator Mwaruma. Senator Mwaruma, some of these strikes by our doctors they relate to delays in exchequer releases. But sometimes, the county governments deduct money from staff and they do not remit. And Mr. Speaker, if you allow me just one minute to inform Senator Sifuna, who was very hard on CS Mbadi earlier in the morning. It is unfortunate I was not here to provide that information at that point. Mr. Speaker, CS Mbadi, after meeting the president, had an appointment with his tailor. Yesterday, 